We found uh, an increased risk of depression in, in all patients who, ha who had undergone a radical prostatectomy and especially the patients uh, receiving ADT uh, had an increased risk for up to 18 years after surgery. Well, finally today, we've been looking at the science and the guidelines, but one of the effects of prostate cancer that's often overlooked is the impact on mental health, with evidence to show that just the diagnosis of cancer can lead to an increased suicide risk. Well, here at EAU, a series of abstracts are taking a look into this issue, and I'm delighted to have some of the authors with us here to talk about it more. Thank you all for joining us. Zach, we'll just start with you. I'll ask you all, but quickly, sure. could you just summarize very quickly your abstract? Sure. So we looked at patients that had uh, prostate cancer as well as kidney and bladder cancer, and we looked at this population to see what the impact of a psychiatric uh, utilization was before their diagnosis, and we found that it was increased risk of cancer-specific mortality as well as increased risk of suicide. The suicide aspect is interesting because it's adjusting for psychiatric comorbidities, which has not been done in the past. Brilliant. And, and Sophia, maybe you could summarize for us. Yeah, we did a, a nationwide um, registry-based study on uh, men who underwent radical prostatectomy um, over a 13-year period. Um, and then we um, focused on the effect of uh, salvage radiation and ADT on the risk of depression. And we found uh, an increased risk of depression in, in all patients who, ha who had undergone a radical prostatectomy, and especially the patients uh, receiving ADT uh, had an increased risk for up to 18 years after surgery. And Carol, what did you find? Yeah, so we did a Mona institutional study at Oslo University Hospital, analyzing the outcomes of uh, 760 patients operated with radical prostatectomy from 2005 to 2010. And we looked then and dichotomized patients to high and low neuroticism. And what we were able to show is that uh, patient reported outcome measures as uh, studied by the EPIC-26 were much poorer, significantly poorer in patients with high neuroticism versus those with low neuroticism. So all these different findings, uh, would you say they're in interconnected, Zach? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think there's, this is really just starting to come to light. So I think the fact that we're having this discussion is called a debate. I think it's more of just, you know, fleshing out where we need to focus our resources and and bringing awareness to this, this topic. What would you say the impact of, of these mental health issues is? Just to put some numbers on it, we, we found that after 10 years after surgery, uh, a quarter of the patients receiving ADT uh, had a, an indication of depression. So that's a lot of, a lot of men uh, getting affected by this. Carol, I, I said earlier, it's something that's often overlooked. Why is the impact on mental health not being looked at more? Or is it being looked at enough yet? I, I think it's, it's not being looked at enough, definitely not, I think. Um, and uh, we start to getting tools and also much greater awareness about mental health issues and uh, outcomes because it's, it's not affecting only the patient, it affects all the families. So, so it's getting uh, the baseline of 25% of all cancer, urologic cancer, it's quite a lot. Would you agree with that? Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, at our center, at the Georgia Cancer Center, we're really starting to develop prospective interventions. And not just interventions, but evaluating how these interventions, do they work? And if they don't work, how can we change it? We are looking um, at mental health from different kinds of angles. And uh, our study shows, with only six questions that patients can uh, answer in, in three minutes, we can get an idea of patients who have a high versus a low sure. neuroticism. Uh, it gives us tools to analyze and, and start to, to getting better ideas how to help those patients. And how do you encourage then people to use these tools better? Well, I think a couple of years ago they introduced uh, in the guidelines uh, of treatment of prostate cancer that clinicians should be aware of depressive symptoms. I think that's a start. We have to keep uh, assuring that clinicians are aware. Maybe we don't have all the tools gathered yet. If I can make one more point on that yep. too. I think, I think the, we're looking at their PSA, we're talking about their erectile function, their urinary incontinence. A lot of it's a time crunch. And the other thing too, I think there's a lot of discomfort for the physicians talking to patients about this. So 
we're trying to get our psycho-oncology colleagues involved very early so that they can handle that, we can handle what we do best, they can handle what they do, but work together. Well, thank you all for joining us and um, enjoy the rest of the Congress. Great, thank you. EAU TV is brought to you from the 34th Annual EAU Congress in Barcelona. And if you'd like to watch more things like this, then you can click on these videos here. And you can also subscribe for the very best in medicine, from psychology to urology, from gynaecology to genetics.